today the customer is calling saying their kitchen AC is too hot. It's not working right. This is not an ideal location because it's right next to an exhaust fan. Um, let's open this guy up. Where's the cover for the board? Uh, uh, strike three, compressor two, alarm 15, alarm 14, high pressure. Lots of high pressure codes. Off on alarm 129, 173. This guy's completely off. Um, let's have a look at the condenser. It's pretty dirty. Step over here. In here is usually the worst. Yeah, this is plugged. Okay. We're gonna have to uh, probably start with cleaning this guy because the condenser looks dirty. And then we'll test the fan motors and everything else and see what's going on with it. Pulling the covers off the condenser so I can clean it from the inside out. Look at this. So that would probably cause part of their high pressure problem. So I'm gonna make sure we get that plugged in. It's to the third one right here. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. There you go. We're gonna continue cleaning it. We're gonna start with hot water, trying to soften up some of that grease and then we'll put some yellow venom pack on there to try to help clean it up so just putting hot water from the inside out we gotta be careful too we don't want to drain their water heater completely but the restaurant's not open yet we should be able to go for a few minutes we're just going to get a little bit of grease that's on there a little bit warm that way when i put the yellow venom pack on there it has a better fighting chance of breaking down that grease unfortunately this is a micro channel the blue venom pack would strip this stuff off in a heartbeat but you got to be careful because you don't want to disintegrate the micro channel condenser so I've got the first coat of the yellow venom pack on here with hot water and we're, we let it sit for about five minutes and it's doing a pretty good job this thing has a blue coat coil coating on it so you got to be careful not to use anything too abrasive you're technically not supposed to use coil cleaner but you got to when it's next to a exhaust fan so we're just uh, rinsing it and then we'll apply another layer and let it sit for a little bit longer. So we're gonna spray, we're using the yellow venom pack again. We're just spraying it from the inside and just letting it sit on the coil. And then we'll spray it from the outside too, letting it sit and do its work. Now this is just a proprietary mix of soap and water. So it's not gonna etch the coil, it's not gonna disintegrate it. You can see that the dirt is just rolling out of this thing. It's not doing a good job just let this stuff sit spray it over here and then we'll go apply it to the other side too all right we got plenty of cleaner on there it's time for the first rinse from this one so you just rinse it nice and slow getting all the cleaner out of there and then we'll rinse the other side too and you really gotta rinse it a lot because these soap suds really get stuck in those coils. But you can see it coming through really good in here. Really, really good. Oh yeah, dirt's coming out too, so just keep on rinsing. Don't wanna forget the metal mesh filters. If you have the hose out, might as well just give them a rinse. And make sure these are in the ACs because these prevent rodents and bugs and stuff from getting into the building through the outside air dampers. So be very careful cleaning these. We're using a non-corrosive cleaner. Again, the yellow venom pack from Refrigeration Technologies. So it's not going to eat anything away. But the trick to that cleaner is you just got to let it sit for a while. We're uh, just about done rinsing this guy. We need to go get the, uh, the air blower and... Uh, get all the retained water out of there the I think it's called surface tension or whatever that's holding all that water in so we got to get all that out so we don't make a bubble party when we turn this unit back on because all the soap suds will just start going up and getting into the motors and that can be a problem I will regularly switch hose nozzles to suit the different needs that I have now I went downstairs and I turned off the hot water because it served its purpose we're using cold water now and I'm just rinsing the coil cleaner off the roof so it doesn't damage anything down the drain and then just rinsing all the dirt and everything left over because you don't want to leave dirt left in here for it to get sucked back up. So it's all about making these things, treating it like it's your own. Just a little bit of this right here in the foam gun, mixed right, works wonders. Again, the trick is just to let it sit. Um, it lasts a long time too. You can see it's just been sitting in my van. 
But yeah, this stuff is awesome, so I highly suggest it. Check it out at uh, truetechtools.com and you can use my offer code big picture. You'll get a discount on majority of the items and then I get a small commission from that. So a great way to help support the channel. All right, we're in cleanup mode now. We still haven't figured out if there's anything else wrong with the unit, but I cleaned the roof as best as possible, rinsed everything down. I'm gonna go get my air blower, blow this out, and then we'll finish diagnosing the unit. See, with the blower, see how much water comes out. You still get bubbles. So it's always best to blow these things off. I pulled the doors off because it's so close to the exhaust fan so that we have easier access to everything and I'm not fighting. I'm getting the liquid line ports off and you gotta make sure you back them up with a wrench, right? This one I already got off, but you gotta back them up with a wrench because you don't wanna twist that off of that, right? So you gotta be very careful, think about what you're doing. All right, all the condenser fan motors are running now. This one wouldn't have been running with that wire disconnected, so I'm sure that was part of the problem. Oh, uh, looks like I got a little refrigerant leak right here. Tighten that down. That should take care of that. I might actually have a bad gasket. I'm gonna have to change that. Oh, uh, it looks like it might be stopping. I don't know, I'll investigate that, but we're just uh, letting the unit stabilize out, and then we will uh, go through everything. We're gonna let it run for another 10 minutes just to get everything stabilized and then we'll evaluate everything. Okay, let's go to the first stage. So I'm noticing the sub cooling's a little bit low, but let's scroll on over to the second stage. We're just looking at the superheat and the sub cooling at the moment. Scroll to the second stage. Let's see what that one does. It's about 12 degrees sub cooling, but watch, it's gonna, it's gonna fluctuate. As the, as the valve opens and closes and takes more refrigerant, you're gonna see the subcooling drop. Um, let's go to the, so we can just watch it for another second. So the expansion valves seem like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're trying. We've got a very low saturation because there's no load inside the building, 29 degree evaporator. So it's really hard to really troubleshoot these things at the moment. Number three, let's look at that one. Kind of doing the same thing. Sub cooling's really low. Um, I think we probably need to put a little bit of refrigerant in the first stage and the third stage. I feel like second stage seems to be regulating a little bit better. Okay, so let's go over to the third stage and then let's scroll on over and uh, you can see 63 degrees outside right now. And then the indoor temperature, return dry bulb 65, 23 degree temp split. Airflow is a little on the low side, but I'm also getting temperatures right at the package unit itself, which isn't ideal for airflow measurements. Um, so I think we're gonna put a little bit of gas probably at least in the first stage because it's consistently running really low subcooling when the other stages seem to be doing a little bit better. So let's do that. Let's get that subcooling number up at least to about five degrees, um, match what the other units are doing. Now the manufacturer doesn't spec subcooling numbers usually. I'll look at their data, but usually they don't. But other than that, we're just gonna top off the charge. It's not gonna be much. Um, I think the biggest problem was that condenser fan motor that had come loose with the wiring and then the condenser being dirty. Now these condensers too, you know, you can't be perfect. Like you see, you can still see the, the discoloration. That's gonna be how it's gonna be. The other thing to consider too, before I add refrigerant, is we gotta get this condenser completely dried out. You see how there's still moisture in there? So yeah, we can't be adding refrigerant until that's all dry. Even though I blew it out, there's still water in there and that's gonna be affecting the operation of the unit. So yeah, we're not gonna put gas in it yet until it runs for a little bit longer. I added a little bit of gas to the first stage, got the sub cooling up. Seems to be pretty stable now, between eight and 10 degrees sub cooling. Superheat is fluctuating between 10 and 15. I don't see a problem with that. It's kind of doing the same thing on the second stage. It's looking pretty good. And third stage is pretty much looking the same. So we've got those three all running. My uh, saturation temperature is getting really low for the evaporator. 
airflow is a hair on the on the low side just a hair but again there's not really much I can do to change that because uh, I'm using the air probes in the unit and it's not the most ideal location other than that this unit is doing everything it can um, it's working as best as possible you know uh, condensers as clean as it can be without going too crazy there's always gonna be a little bit of grease on there because it's a micro channel and you can't really do a whole lot you know to strip that grease off um, it's not bad I mean it's clear it just has a ugly finish to it you know you can still see that dirt look but it's clean it's moving air moving air really good so they're gonna be super happy about this also clean the metal mesh put the unit all back together rinse down as much dirt as I could um, and that said I'm gonna put all the panels back on I'm not seeing anything else wrong with this unit at this time and we'll just tell the customer to keep an eye on it. As the warmer weather starts, it's currently May 1st of 2024. Uh, we're starting to get more and more AC service calls. So it's still that weird spring transitional period where we have cold mornings, warm afternoons. It's not like hot, hot yet. Um, I think out in the desert, they're starting to hit into the mid 90s. Uh, where I'm at in the Inland Empire of Southern California, it's in the 80s. You know, I think we hit 90 like one day, but we haven't quite gotten that warm in my area yet. But it's starting to warm up, and we're definitely getting more and more of those AC no cooling calls. Um, so it's kind of cool, right? But this one was a dirty condenser, essentially. Okay, but also we had a loose wire at one of the condenser fan motors. Probably happened when, like, the last time someone was cleaning a coil or something like that. Who knows? You know, it's hard to say because that wire went up there pretty good and it grabbed pretty good. So I'm not afraid of it really falling out per se. So who knows? But it's important, you know, especially since I understand the sequence of operation and how this unit works. You know, I just quickly checked, saw high pressure codes. All right, we know what it is. I just pretty much ignore the rest of the codes, just erase the history, and then clean the condenser gauge up on the unit and start from there, right? So we definitely saw that there was a bunch of grease buildup and stuff on that condenser and it's inevitable because it's located so close to an exhaust fan, but it's not like horrible. I've seen a lot worse to say the least, but this is not that bad. Also to understand though, is that, you know, we, we don't have to have that thing super shiny clean. You know, I think even myself for the longest time was obsessed with shiny. You know, I want it to be shiny. And it's like, once you really start realizing what's happening when you get it shiny, is you're eating the top layer of the coil off. If you have to use brightener cleaners, right, which is the blue venom pack from Refrigeration Technologies, you have to understand that you can only do that so much. You know, every time you clean that condenser with the blue brightener cleaners, you're etching away a layer of that coil. Okay. And it's inevitable. Sometimes you just got to do it, especially with customers that don't do, you know, really good routine maintenance stuff gets dirty and you got to do something. I mean, I've even had to use, uh, some of the, the, the brightener cleaners on micro channel coils. It's not ideal. I get the customer to sign off on it, but it, the alternative is change the whole coil, right? So, you know, sometimes they get so impacted with grease that you got to do what you got to do. But it's so important if you are going to use a cleaner, doesn't matter if it's the yellow venom pack or the blue venom pack, whatever it may be, you need to make sure you're cleaning it all off, rinsing it all off, flushing it out with water, getting it all the way away from the unit. Don't leave that coil cleaner just sitting on the roof to where it can start to do something to the roof materials. Clean it off, wash it down the drain. You know, make sure you're, you're, you're treating it like it's your own. The other thing is when you wash a condenser and all that dirt comes out and it lays right below the condenser and just sits on the roof, as the moisture dries up, that will become dust and it'll suck right back up into that condenser. So you're defeating the purpose of washing it if you don't wash all that dirt away from the unit. That's so important. I can't stress that enough. Now, I went ahead and gauged up on this unit. For everybody that's going to ask, I was using a software called Measure Quick. It has a free version and a paid version. There's a few options that you don't get in the, the free version that you get in the paid version. You know, So to each their own. But it is a free software. It works with multiple different tools. I have no affiliation with Measure Quick whatsoever. I just happen to like the software, okay? So they get some free publicity in my videos, I guess. But um, it's just a great software to consolidate data. I don't necessarily myself use the troubleshooting 
uh, stuff that they have in it because it doesn't apply so much to commercial and or refrigeration. The troubleshooting features and stuff they have does a really good job for residential, but it's just not really tailored towards the commercial or the refrigeration side. But I like it because it consolidates data. It puts the superheat, the subcooling, the discharge temperature, discharge pressure, you know, liquid pressure, saturation temperatures, airflow. It does an estimated airflow reading, right? It does all that and it puts it all in front of you in one screen so you don't have to run around doing a bunch of different things, okay? I like it. Not saying you have to use it. It just, I like consolidated data right at my fingertips. I like to be able to see all three compressors on that particular unit running at the same time so I can see what happens and you can see trends between the compressors and you know, if you start to notice really low superheat on all three compressors, really low saturation temperatures, okay. So then you start thinking what can cause something with this with all the compressors versus if you're looking at three compressors at once and you only see a weird, um, you know, uh, really low superheat and, you know, whatever metric you want to say on just one compressor, but the other two are working good. It's a great troubleshooting method so that way you can look at everything and say, hmm, this is kind of strange, you know, and evaluate things that way. So I like having that software. It's great. Again, no affiliation with them. Um, for, you know, cleaning the coils, I can't stress enough. you got to make sure you're cleaning that stuff up drying the condenser before you start adding refrigerant to the system, making sure that you're getting true metrics, you know, and then the numbers aren't being skewed by a wet coil or really low load in the building. You got to kind of pay attention to that stuff. So again, just another great video, you know, nothing too crazy, but it's just a, one of the videos I do on a rate. I mean, one of the service calls I do on a regular basis, right? You know, I don't film everything I do. I might film one or two service calls a week and I might run, you know, sometimes five to 10 service calls a week right now. Right. It just depends. Cause I do a lot of time in the office too. Um, you know, obviously having to deal with office stuff, which is never fun, but it is what it is. But anyways, I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much for making it here. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a great way to help support the channel. A couple other ways to help support the channel. You can go to truetechtools.com. If you like anything that I use in my videos, whether it be the chemicals or the tools, a good majority of those items are available at truetechtools.com. I have an affiliate program set up with them with an offer code, big picture, one word. If you use that offer code at checkout, I get a small commission from your purchase, and then you get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website. So that's a really cool way to help support the channel. You can also go to my website, hvacrvideos.com, where we have merchandise available. Um, and uh, there's also PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel memberships. There's links to each one of those in the show notes of the video. Those are just one way to help support the channel. It's a monthly commitment that you make. You can choose the amount. Again, just click on the links. You can figure all that stuff out. So thank you so very much. I really do appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one.